Evening, welcome to Fellcraft Casts, and I'm Hammy. Hope you're well and good. And it's Tuesday, it's Pick Your Own Arena, and we are going to be drafting Warrior this evening. And as I was saying earlier, I'm not sure whether this warrior is sad or whether he's wise. Either way, he's got a big, big mace, so no messing with him. Without further ado, let's jump in. Now, what we do on Tuesdays, we always tweet on at Fellcraft Casts and give you guys a choice as to what arena hero you'd like to go for. Today, you went for Warrior, so everyone on Twitter went for some Garrosh. So let's jump on in. And as the first three cards come up, and you guys can start thinking about what you decide. If you're on YouTube, we pick these live on stream. If you're on stream, take a look in the chat. You can see the choices typed out, and you can make a choice. I will analyze each card as we go, and we will follow three simple rules. And it's a very strong th first three pick. So as you folks take a look at those. I'm just going to go through the three basic rules we go for when picking an arena. Number one, we review our deck often. So we pick three points in our 30 cards that we pick. We're zero out of, zero out of 30 right now. Um, let's pick, say, eight cards, 16 cards, and 24 cards. The reason for doing that, it means we can review what our deck is quite often, and we can add cards. We can decide to try and pick cards in a particular direction if we see fit. So, hey, and welcome to Catherilla. It's great to have you with us. Hope you're well and good. Um, so that's our rule number one for Arena. Make sure you review your deck reasonably often. You know, every, let's say, eight picks, take a step back, take a look at your cards, and see how they're working. Rule number two, we always, when we do that review of our cards, we take a look at our mana curve, and we take a look at spells against minions. Now, mana curve is a pretty simple one. How many cards of what kind of mana cost do I have at each point of my deck? So if I have a load of late game cards, if I have a load of five, six, seven mana cards, then I'm looking like a control deck. I need to keep myself alive until I can play all those big cards. If I've got a load of one, two, three mana cards, then maybe I'm sort of really early game. Maybe I'm rushing, maybe I'm trying to throw loads of small minions, loads of small spells, small costing spells into my opponent's face early. So the mana curve gives you a bit of indication as to which day where your deck might be going, so it's always worth looking at. And then spells against minions, well, that's more of a measure of have you got a lot of spells? Are you going to be throwing around a lot of spells like a mage? Have you got a lot of minions? Are you going to be trying to get minions on the table to trade, protect yourself, win with, or some kind of balance? And then third rule is doing a little playthrough in your head of turn by turn, what you might try and do each turn. So in terms of one mana, two mana, three mana, four mana, five mana, how does your deck flow? And that's the reason for sort of walking through your deck in your head. Okay, so those are our three rules. Let's jump in. Everyone's already voted. I'll just do a razor quick review of these and we'll go. Cobra, solid card. If you can drop it, trade away bigger minions than it, things that cost a lot more. That destroy any minion damage upon this minion is good. Argus, amazing value um, used to make anything into taunting tanks to protect yourself. Buffs minions as well, really, really good. Sludge Belcher, equally really strong tank. And of course, you can get that with Naxxramas. Everyone's gone for some Belcher, so Belcher has got the knot. Next we have a Haunted Creeper, an Armani Berserker, or a Worgen Infiltrator. So, well, people pick between these three. Creeper, throw it down. When it dies, you get two Spectral Spiders. It's a beast, good for hunters and similar things that thrive off beasts. Remember that the Spectral Spiders that Haunted Creeper summons on that death rattle, they're not beasts. If you're a hunter, that's important. Armani Berserker, pretty solid, um, enraging for a three attack, good if you can trigger it, but when people see it, they'll probably try and remove it, get it out of the way before it has a chance to enrage. Still, a solid minion for its cost. Organ Infiltrator, throw it down, it's got stealth, maybe, just maybe, you'll get it out of stealth and do some damage, and then it's probably going to die with that low health. Remember, of course, anything in stealth, if your opponent uses a global ability, so something like Whirlwind, which does damage to all minions, Holy Nova, which does damage to all enemy minions, doesn't matter whether you're stealthed or not, it's still going to come in and be removed. So we see people going, oh, it looks like a narrow vote for Creeper. Worgen, to be different, says Dan. He plays by no one's rules, not even his own. And Brock, welcome to you as well. Brock, Brock's gone for some Creeper, deciding where it comes in, and that is a Creeper that we're going to be grabbing. It's nice early game pressure there, liking it. Next, we've got a Spectral Knight, an Acidic Swamp Ooze, and an Anoyotron. Okay, let's review these three. Well, King Ooze needs no introduction, the, the king and hero of this stream. Um, Ooze is our prophet and our saviour. <laughs> and immediately the votes for Ooze flying on him. But hey, you know what, for two mana... Um, three attack and two health. He is just an overall solid minion, and then the battle cry is useful against a weapon. Now, Spectral Knight, really, 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 really good minion, and cannot be targeted by heroes or um, hero powers or spells. Um, of course, 
like a fairy dragon. Very solid as a five mana drop. Pretty, pretty good for anchoring the mid game. Good mid game pressure. And then last but not least, a new card with goblins versus gnomes, the Annoyatron. And <laughs> the Annoyatron is really annoying. It even makes an annoying noise when you put it on the table. Um, but hey, Taunt and Divine Shield. Now, if you don't like getting rushed, you get an Annoyatron down turn two. Those rushing minions are going to have to punch through the Divine Shield. They're going to have to hit the Annoyatron before they hit anything else. Two health might stay alive. It's a reasonable card, and people are definitely playing it in decks. And it's a mech, and mechs are just disgusting in Goblins vs. Names at the moment. Disgustingly good. <laughs> it's all good fun. Right, let's see what people have gone for. I can see ooze, 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 ooze. I see four oozes there. We've got a couple of knights. Uh, yeah, the power of ooze. Welcome. Welcome. Silver as well. It's good to see two. As though ooze wins out. Next. And welcome to Thrash as well. Good to see you as well. Next we've got a Murloc Tide Hunter, a River Croc, a Lisk, or a Frost Wolf Grunt. So this is one of those three picks when you see an arena and you think, oh, okay, well, what do I actually do? Um, none of those seem amazing. Um, so you will have this in arena. What looks solid in itself? What is good in arena? Well, stuff that is good value in the early to mid game. Stuff that will protect you, stuff that will help you trade minions, or stuff that will help you get some kind of table advantage. Between three cards that may not look amazing, you always want to go for something that either fits with the theme that you have so far, or will give you one of those advantages. And everyone has gone for Croc. I'll just discount the others and then explain why Croc is popular. Murloc Tide Hunter is a good 2 for 1, but with the 1 1 Scout and the 1 1 Murloc, you're vulnerable to getting removed. Still, 2 for 1 cards are pretty good in Arena. Frostwolf Grunt, there's nothing wrong with it. It's 2-2-2, two, 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 just straight across the board, and welcome to Obring as well. And then last but not least, the Croc. Now, why is the Croc good? Well, that 3 health, you might get 2 trades. You might get, be able to remove 2 minions for that 1 minion. So, it's just a solid minion in itself. Not necessarily something that you would, uh, um, you know, pick necessarily in one of your constructed decks. But, in Arena, various other cards can come good. So we have Jeeves, um, Defender of Argus, or Bomb Lobber. At the end of each player's turn, that player draws until they have three cards. Lots of people are playing with, experimenting with Jeeves. If you're playing a deck that empties your hand, then and you throw Jeeves down on the table, if your opponent's playing any kind of mid-game or late-game deck, they're going to be struggling to have three or less cards. You, on the other hand, are burning all your cards and drawing more and having a big party and winning. So, loads of fun. Defender of Argus, we've already covered. Just generally really solid. Do we have big things to tank up with it? Not quite yet, but could do. And then the Bomb Lobber. Four damage to a random enemy minion. So much fun. <laughs> Lobbed. <laughs> bomb Lobber. Jeeves, Jeeves. Lobber too fun. Lobber. Oh my goodness. It is a... I can see what... I'm just trying to... It looks as though, oh, lobbers, you're feeling the Jeeves, feeling the lobber, okay. I can see three, uh, I think that lobber is getting the vote. <laughs> yeah, that's, le lobber's totally got it. There we go, why not? Next we've got a Dark Scale Healer, an Arcanite Reaper, or a Ship's Cannon. So, the Dark Scale Healer, throw down two health to all friendly characters, we get all healed up. Uh, 4 attack, 5 health, it can throw stuff off the table, not awful at all. The Reaper, don't fear the Reaper, do fear the Reaper, the Reaper's a beast. Um, and remember of course there are cards in we can draw as a warrior like Upgrade. It will increase the durability of that weapon by 1 and the attack by 1. 5-2 two to 6-3, I'll take a 6-3 Reaper any day of the week. Lastly, the ship's cannon. Whenever you summon a pirate, deal two damage to a random enemy. We've always talked about opening the murloc door. <laughs> when you draft your first murloc, everyone wants to pick murlocs. I think the ship's cannon is like opening the pirate door. If we op if we pick a ship's cannon, then we're going to want to pick pirates. It's not awful. It's not a knife juggler. I think that's all we can really say about it. Okie dokie, so we can see people going for Reaper, 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 Cannon! Reaper! Ah, massive party. Loving it. Next we have a Mogushan. We have a Mogushan Warden. Warden. Dragon or Dark Iron Dwarf. So, the Mogishan Warden, a ridiculously, ridiculously strong tank. 
It's going to take some removing. It will wall you up. It will certainly help you set up your table. The Fairy Dragon can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. Nothing wrong with it for just 2-3-2. Two, two. A really strong pick if there's nothing else to go. The Dark Iron Dwarf, well, you get the 4 attack and 4 health, but you also get giving a minion to attack this turn. That lets you use smaller minions and trade for larger minions, or perhaps do some more rush damage. So, not so bad whatsoever. Dwarf, 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 Fairy, Dragon, just because I like dragons. <laughs> there are a number of people who pick dragons just because they like dragons, Mr. T Farmer, so there's no problem whatsoever. Ooh, can't fault you for that. Logic is impeccable. Oh, that's looking like looking like a dwarf. I'm gonna say that's a dwarf. The the dragons or no dragons debate continuing with pace. Okay, in the interests of cracking on, I'm gonna say that that's a dwarf. Next, we've got a Heroic Strike, a Fury War Axe, or a Warbot. So, Heroic Strike, see it in Weapons Warrior decks, give your hero plus four attack this turn, nothing wrong with that, we can use that to start whacking away things on the table, we can use it to hit our opponent in the face, because everyone likes to hit their opponent in the face, Hearthstone wise, of course. And then last but not least, Generally handy. The Fury War X 232, um, used in ladder decks and decks all around the world. You use it, you whack, aggro away with it. Lots of small rushing decks. Very, very awesome. And then the Warbot. New Warrior card, Goblins vs. Gnomes, a mech. Enrage 1 attack, that goes from a 1 3 to a 3 2. Not the worst in the world, but you're not using it for control in the early game. If you're trying some kind of Warrior mech rush, yes. If you're going to try and get your opponent's rush under control, no. Fury win axe. I'm going to say that that's an axe. That's a universal axe vote. And we're up to eight cards, so I'm going to do a little um, review of these three cards, and then I'm going to go through our first deck review point because we've got to eight cards. So, Silverback Patriarch, three one four. It's not a four one seven. Um, it is a taunt. It's not amazing. It can wall us up if we need. Shadow Sun Cleric, nice solid card. Friendly minion 1 1. We can, of course, buff any of our early game minions, late game minions, and then the 3 2 might trade something away. So if you're rushing or if you're trying to stabilize an early to mid game, get your opponent's minions under control, great card. Fourth, a Rathi Weaponsmith, oh so solid, oh so awesome. You also get that 2 2 weapon. Do not forget. So even if you only have a 3 3 minion for that 4 mana, the 2 2 weapon will help you perhaps pick off some little minions as well. Okay, so we're eight cards. Let's do a quick review of where we are at. So, rule number one, revo review often. We've done that. So let's take a look at the mana curve. Uh, no real clues because we're early on. We've got two, four, five. Nothing late game, nothing early game. Too soon to tell. Maybe we're an early mid game deck, but we'll see how that works out. Spells against minions. Well, I see no spells. Let's say that weapons are spells. Six minions to two spells. And then turn by turn playthrough, number three. Well, Axe and Ooze in the early game will help us control enemy minions, so will the Haunted Creeper. We can throw any of those minions down in the early game if we need. We can trade up and keep the pressure on with Dark Iron Dwarf. Reaper and Axe we can use to control. Axe will probably go for the face or control big minions. I drop the Fury War Axe in the early game to control little minions. A Bomb Lobber, well, why not? Four damage to a random minion. And then the Sludge Belcher really underpins our game. So... Three steps review, we've done that. Let's take a look at this deck at 16 cards time. No real clue so far, but we, what we do have so far is a nice solid core. Um, we've got minions we can play at most stages so far. We've got some nice control options with the weapons. And we've got some tanks as well. Back into the game, everyone's gone for the Weaponsmith. Loving your work. Next, oh, the horror. Interesting, okay, so we've already covered the Cobra. Do you want one or not? Mana Wraith, I just think there's, I, I, I dislike that card. <laughs> I'm going to put it out there. All minions costing one more. Yeah, maybe all right for anti-rush. Maybe. And then Violet Teacher. Now that's an interesting one. Um, Violet Teacher used in ladder, constructed in a lot of token decks. Um, play a lot of spells, summon a lot of Violet Apprentices, buff those apprentices, cause havoc. Druids, enjoy the Violet Teacher um, very much. Um, but... Do you know what? It's a solid minion in its own right. 4 3 5. You'll be able to trade some things off the table. You might get a few Violet Apprentice benefits. <laughs> Tough choice between those three. I think that most people are thinking um, Cobra. Teacher's not awful, but Cobra makes more sense here. I agree completely. Teacher would be good if we had a lot of spells, says Thresh. 
Catharella saying some Cobra. Yeah, I think that's a very sensible choice. At least, if nothing else, we can throw that Cobra down and try and make some beneficial trades. So we're going to take a look at a young Dragonhawk, a mad scientist, or a zombie chat. Woo, okay. Dragonhawk we throw down. Um, it's probably going to die. If it doesn't die, we might do two damage. Fair enough. Mad scientist, great if we have secrets. We're not a secret playing class, so it's a 2-2-2. Bow wow wow, ciao. <laughs> Bow wow wow, yippee oh yippee oh. Dear me, can anyone remember that song? Was it Little Wayne? I don't know. Maybe I'm showing my age. <laughs> Identify the year of hip hop. And then thirdly, ciao, a beloved of many streamers. This card is, is, is a Marmite card for those from the UK. You love it or you hate it. It's a spread. Marmite is a spread. Vegemite in Australia. If you're not from the UK, if you don't recognise Marmite or Vegemite, that's what it is. You love it or you hate it. Chow will let you, if you get it down early game, trade opposing minions like no one's business. But you don't want to hit to your enemy's face because when this dies, it restores five health to your enemy. Looks like people are going for some Chow. We've got a Blood Fen Raptor. Senjin Shield Master. I'm going to hold Dan Does Red, solely responsible for making me quote Lil, Lil Wayne. The Blood Fen Raptor is just a solid minion. I remember when we said, oh, if you don't think there's anything good, what do you pick? Go for things that look solid, and 2-3-2, two, two, that is just solid. Good attack, reasonable health, good for its point in the game. Um, Sengen Shieldmaster, a brilliant basic. Uh, Noble T-Farmer, this is for you, any of you new players. Sengen Shieldmaster is a basic card. Just throw two of those in your deck, just because it's amazing. It's a taunt, 3 attack, 5 health, real, real solid. Scarlet Crusader, well, good for training, good for Pallidex. 3 attack, 1 health. Um, I'm seeing some... Um, seeing you know some trades, you can use it with Blood Knights. What is everyone thinking of? I can see Shieldmaster, Shieldmaster, Senjin, Senjin. Yeah, that's definitely a, a Senj, Senj Dingo. Commanding shout, Argent Commander. Oh, an upgrade. Hey, that's the card I was looking for. So, Commanding shout, your minions can't be released below one health this turn. Draw a card. Not so bad. Um, there's a new card in Goblins vs Gnomes called um, uh, sh uh, it's a shredder blade that flies around and kills everything and it will keep flying around until a minion dies you want to play that with a commanding shout in fact I want to build a fun deck maybe we'll do that this Friday and do commanding shout plus mad shredder blade thing Argent Commander this used to be stronger back in the early days of Hearthstone um, but it's still awesome you throw it down charges divine shields will trade something and then probably die after lastly an upgrade now, weapons based warrior decks. If you have a given weapon, give it 1 1, otherwise, equip a 1 3. The 1 3 will let you chip away aggro decks, but if you put that on top of an Arcanite Reaper, top of a Fury War Axe, you get some horrible weapons with upgrade. Um, Bouncing Blades is Thrush. Everyone is saying Commander. Thrush correctly identifies the card that I just can't remember. Everyone's gone for it. Dread Corsair. An Ogre Brute. Ooh, are we going to open the Ogre? tent flap. I, I don't see ogres going through doors. I think they'd break them. So, Dread Corsair. Taunt costs one less per the attack of your weapon. This is just so cool if you play weapons, because you get free taunt. Um, Ogre Brute, however, um, people have been using these shaman decks other things. 50% chance to attack the wrong enemy. Sounds horrible until you think, well, wait, I actually I dropped this turn three. And the other fact about this is that Ogre Brute's ability goes through stealth or taunt. It can attack the wrong enemy, even if the minion is stealthed, it can be attacked, even if there is a taunt minion on your opponent's side of the table, that can attack. So, ogres are actually quite interesting. And then the Murloc Radar, 1-2-1, throw it down, hopefully it will kill something before it dieth. Ooh, okay, split of opinion. We've got a split, a total split. Oh, Corsair. We, we had an ogre vote, and then suddenly Corsair came in with a late little switch. So we'll see if anyone fancies for anything else, but it looks as though that Corsair has got the knot. Um, Ogre would have also been a very solid choice. I don't, f I wouldn't have felt bad at all if we grabbed an Ogre. So we now have a Frothing Berserker, an Ancient Mage, a Gnomish... I can't spell Gnomish. Experimentar. So, Berserker. Warrior only card, as you can see by the background. Whenever a minion takes damage, gain one. Uh, in constructed decks, this is used and abused by being thrown around things like um, whirlwind, anything that just uh, 
damages all so many things. The more damage that happens, the more this gets buffed. If you throw it up behind a tank and the tank gets damaged, and of course when your opponent's minions get damaged, this also gains attack. It can become horrific. Um, horrific, horrific, horrific. Ancient Mage, give adjacent minions spell damage 1. 2 attack, 5 health, it can trade some minions. However, we don't really rely on spell damage. Um, but may not be bad in other decks. There's an evil combo, 2 Ancient Mages, 2... Um, Two Ancient Mages, two Sorcerer's Apprentices. Try and do 30 damage in one go with a Freeze Mage deck. Um, but that's constructed. Nomish Experimenter, draw a minion of a card if it's a minion, transform it into a chicken. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna let you think about that one. Everyone's gone for Berserker, and I love your taste and wit and discretion for doing so. And we have a Blood Soul Raider, Storm and Champion, or a Cult Master. So the Cell Raider, hey, not so bad. Pirates synergize well with weapons. They team up well together. Gain attack equal to the attack of your weapon. Hey, we've got some weapons. We could throw down a Blood Cell Raider. That could be a 7-3, that could be a 5-3. Not so bad. Stormwind Champion, though. Your other minions have 1-1. One, one. If we've got a full table up until that point, or a reasonable table, that is our finisher. That's our mid to late game finisher. So six attack, six health will probably do something before it dies. It shouldn't get wiped out unless we're playing a nasty fireballing mage or something similar. And then last but not least, the cult master. Whenever one of your other minions dies, draw a card. Throw it down. You can do some draw in. If your sacrificing minions goes really well with decks with little charging minions, hunter, throw and unleash the hounds down on the table, and then follow that up with cult master and then sacrifice your doggies and watch all of the cards that you draw so we see stormwind the mind of stormwind mm, cult Ooh, i see a oh, raider cult cult yeah that looks that looks like a that looks like a vote vote for cult everyone's going for some cult okay stormwind 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 they're not all bad they're all not bad yeah that's a very fair point then okay next let's go for a youthful brewmaster an arch mage or a gnome regan i always call this gnome regan don't know if any of you warcraft players can help me out with correct pronunciation but i think that uh, i've always heard like a uh, blizzardy people on streams call it gnome regan so we're at 16 cards while you guys pick i'll do a quick review of these cards and then we'll review our deck um returning a friendly minion from the battlefield to your hand with brewmaster good for bouncing 232 solid card um, but it works well with things with battle cry. Can we pick up something with a battle cry, or it's a free heal on something? So we could, uh, we could, ba we could bounce a bomb lobber and throw it down again. We could equip another weapon. We could heal up something. We could uh, destroy two weapons. I don't know. There's things we could do. We could even just pick up something that's about to die. And uh, of course, if we picked up an Argent Commander, played it again. It would then uh, probably, most probably get its well it would get its divine shield back because we replay the card okay 16 cards so three rules one review the mana curve early to mid very much so we're not looking beyond six seven mana and we've got a particular concentration at the moment in mid game so in terms of step two there how many spells how many minions i've got an axe there that you guys have picked i can only actually see the two weapons so we got two weapons and 14 minions. How do we play turn by turn? We control the game early game with Zombie Chow, Axe. We can remove an, a weapon with Ooze or we can control the early game if we're not playing a weapon space cost. Creeper, Crocolis, and Berserker we will just throw and try and make trades with. Thoth and Berserker will put up behind other minions if we can. Cobra we could drop at any point in the game or early to trade away big nasty minions. In comes an Arathi Weaponsmith, gives us a weapon for more control. Cult Master of a card draw, Dark Iron Dwarf. Corsair, we can throw down preferably after a weapon for that free tank, and then tank, big damage, some damage, tank, and finish. So, how is our deck looking right now? Well, we've actually got loads of solid minions. All of them can sort of kind of work on their own, but they can also combo well with other stuff we've got in the deck. And we've got something that we can play that's going to have an impact or keep the pressure on every single turn. So, when you're picking an arena deck and you're trying to see how it's coming together, can you be doing something every turn that's going to be ideally it's all knitting together in a lovely strategy, but this isn't a constructed deck? So, because we're forced to choose cards from a random selection, ideally, you need to be doing something every turn that's valuable to start with and playing strong minions, getting the table under some form of control. And this deck lets us do that. So how do we move on from here? I'd probably say roughly that our deck is a let's take control of the board in the early game with our minions. Let's try and 
really grab control of the board. I think the Sendin Shield Master and the Sludge Belcher are two pivotal points of this deck. In that early mid to mid game phase, we want to get those down. We want to set ourselves up behind tanks. Remember, we could set various minions like the Cobra up, we could set the Cult Master up, and then we pressure into the late game with whatever we get. So, what could we pick? We could pick a couple of big game finishes, late game finishes, or we could really reinforce our early to mid game with big, strong, threatening targets, perhaps some tanks or taunts, maybe some silences. So, our deck feels, feels like a good core. Let's see how it goes in the next 14. Coming back to it, we've got Infantry, a Brewmaster, 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 Noom, oops, three. So I'm going to go and say, mm, that looks like a Brewmaster. People are deciding to feel some battle core targets. Spider tank, spider tank, does whatever a spider tank does. There's a reason that I'm not having a singing career. Spider tank is just solid, solid mech with goblins versus gnomes. 3-3-4, three, three, you throw it down, you'll trade stuff in the end of the game. 4 health, nasty for turn 3, really nasty for turn 3. Any minion of that ilk. Combo up with mechs even stronger. Annoyatron, annoying as it looks as we said. No, I don't think we need early game walls, but not bad in a pinch. Then the Dragonling mechanic, it's a 2 for 1 because you get double bubble, you get a 2-1 Dragonling as well. So that is real awesome too. So let us see how we go. Dragonly mechanic, nothing too wrong with that in terms of trading away minions as well. You can certainly put some nice pressure down um, with the two attack and four health. Okay, what up people fancying? I see mechanic, I see mechanic, I see a Noitron, I see tanks. It looks like a dust spider tank has joined us. Yeah, a bit of spider tank. Welcome best noodle, any good to have you with us. Okay, I'm feeling some spider tank there. That's looking like a spider tank to keep things rocking and rolling. Next, we have a novice engineer, dragonling mechanic, again, oh, a haunted creeper. Righty then, ah, Cathra coming in with a tank. Glad to see that you agree to Splendid. So, we have not covered the novice engineer. That is the only one. Throw it down, draw a card, and it dies. So, nothing too wrong with that. I'm going to take a sip of a sip of Mass Effect tea. I'm going to see if I'm am I am I equipped to show you the awesomeness while you take a pick from those three. This is the Mass Effect tea. Yes, Mass Effect tea. Such good tea. It's my finest swagged mug. This one. Beautiful. I am Commander Hammy, and this is my favourite beverage on the Citadel. Engineer, Creeper, Creeper, Incy, Wincy, Creepy Spider, I see Creep, Creep, Creep. Engineer for card draw, good point thrash, card draw is always useful. That's looking like a spider to me though. Next, a Death Lord, a Mana Addict, or a Secret Keeper. <laughs> Not Doge Cam. The, the Doge is keeping my wiser half company downstairs. Although we've um, we've cleaned up the room, so there's there's more space for him in the future. We will get Doge, Felcroft Doge, back in the future. So what do we have? Um, I, I the, this this pick makes me want to cry. <laughs> okay, so remember our rule. What happens if everything's bad? How do we do that? How do we try and pick something that's relatively solid? Right, Death Lord. Now this is <laughs> Death Lord. Oh, uh, so. <laughs> right. Oh, okay, you guys. Right. Let me let me box off the other ones. So, secret keeper. Whenever a secret is played, gain one one. We have no secrets. That will pl get played and die. Mana relic. Whenever you cost a spell, gain two attack. This turn we don't have loads of spells. Death lord is just oh. <laughs> I'm sorry you guys who are on YouTube watching this. I'm just typing I have a bad feeling about this into the chat. <laughs> Everyone's picked Death Lord. So Death Lord, it's a brilliant tank for its stats, but, and it, the but is a huge one, that ability just can bite you in your behind, in your bottom, so, so easily. It can really nibble you. It can just pick out something from your opponent's deck and who knows what it's going to be. But hey, that's going to be fun. <laughs> Zero three, boys. <laughs> boys, ladies and gentlemen. 
Okay, so Warbot and Rage 1, we've covered that. Not too bad. Execute, wonderful. We can remove nice enemy minions, just brilliant generally. Battle Rage drew a card for each damage friendly character. Okay, so we can draw cards, that is card draw. Uh, remember that your hero counts as a damaged friendly character too, so you can draw some more there. Um, execute, I see, execute, yeah, that's just that's just an execute. An execute is great, it's a really good pick. Um, and we have covered two of those already, good. Our draw speed is picking up. So we'll have a look at charge. Get a friendly minion to attack and charge, all right. We can charge on in three mana, maybe a tad expensive. Um, what do we have? Well, we've got lots of big nasty minions that could benefit from more charge and two attack. Uh, Battle Rage, well, card draw might be good. We've got one River Croc, do you want two? It'll give us a really solid early game if we, we grab a couple of those. What do you fancy? Rage, charge, charging rage, a bit of Croc. Noodle fencing a bit of croc as well. Battle, battle rage. <laughs> that is a bit of rage. Oh, is that rage? I'm just gonna. Um, is that rage? Uh. <laughs> okay, let's do some totting. Rage, 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 rage. I guess that looks like a rage to me. I know we got a charge and a croc. Rage, 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 rage. Oh yeah, I'm gonna say that's a rage. Okay, we got some card draw. Nice. Not sure. Sorry. <laughs> Okie dokie, so well, we have a Warbot, we've got a Lord of the Arena, or a Zombie Chow. We've covered two of those, so we'll take a look at Lord of the Arena. 665. So it is a little lacking in the health department, it has a taunt. 6 attack, pretty solid as well. It will really solid up our middle of the game. Uh, our early game's not looking so bad now, we've got loads of twos. Creepers, loads of interesting pressure there. I'm, I'm not even sure I'm going to put the Death Lord on the table. <laughs> what have we got? We can see Chow. We can see ooh, a Lord of the Arena. I can see another Lord. We want a Lordy. 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 Lordy, the, the New Zealand singer. <laughs> Looks like we've gone for some Lordy. I see one, two, three. Do, 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 do. Okay, a zombie or a warbot. Yeah, warbot. Maybe, maybe, maybe Dan. Maybe Dan's going to be the uh, Dan's going to be the deciding vote. Noodle fencing a zombie or a warbot. Dan, have you got an opinion? Speak now, forever hold your peace. Hmm. Okay, a lord is okay. All right, I'm going to take that as a lord. <laughs> Next, we've got a dark scale healer, a flesh eating ghoul, or Hawkon Elite. The Dark Skull Healer heals stuff, and we have covered that before. It is not a bad stat minion for trading things. So it's solid, it fulfills the solid box, really, really does. Flesh Eating Ghoul is like a Berserker, but it's whenever a minion dies, getting one attack. It's not whenever a minion is damaged, but still pretty good. And then Corcoran Elite, you just throw it down and you charge in and you do damage. For hell scream, for the war truth, Corcoran. My life for Aya. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> one of these things is not like the others. One of these battle cries is incorrect. I think it might have been my one. We have a Cult Master, a Stone Tusk Boar, or an Argent Squire. I just snuck in a little Starcraft battle call there because you have to. We've got a Cult Master, do you want more? We've got a Stone Tusk Boar, that will charge and token and things. And then Squire. Squire's just solid. Throw it down, it'll do some damage. Can chip away. It might get a two for one because it's got that little divine shield as well. A mini shield. So, whichever of these you be fancying, speak now as I see lots of people feeling some Cult Master. Clearly one in their card draw, maybe the little bite, the nasty bite of the four attack two health. Go another cult. Cult master. Cult, cult, cult. Bit of squire. That looks like a cult to me. Yep. 
Team Colt is in the house. Ooh, okay. Now, here's some interesting picks. Lost Tall Strider is a Goblins vs. Gnomes option, and it is a fivefold beast. There's not much to say about it. It's got some goggles on. There you go. That's something to say about that. It's a solid minion. Maybe slightly low on the health front. Who knows? Warthorn Commander. Whenever you summon a minion with three or less attack, give it charge. How many minions do we have with three or less attack? Okay, so I think I've uh, I think I've made up. You know, we've got a lot that that could benefit, but we need to protect this because people will nuke it off the table if we pick it. And then the Blood Cell Raider. Nothing bad to say about that. Okay. Um, so certainly, certainly, so so solid. Tired of basic cards. <laughs> says let <laughs> let on some legendaries. <laughs> War song! Oh yeah, war song, okay. War song comes on in next. Oh my goodness, what have we got here? We've got two that we've picked already. Or two that we've seen already. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about Micro Machine because you guys know the other cards already. Um, great with mechs. You see this in Mech Rush, Mech Mage, Mech Shaman, all that kind of jazz. You know, it is good. Start of every turn, gain one attack. It is like a little budget mini. Um, shade of Naxxramas. Apart from Naxxramas, Shade also gets health and also gets stealth. But this is cheaper. So if you can wall that up, if it, you can attack and your opponent can't remove it, then it's pretty solid. If you went for two Warsong Commanders, we would have a crazy early game rush going on. If you go for Squire, then hey, it gives us some more trading ability in the early game. Nothing wrong with it. So. Looking at our mana curve right now, four cards to pick. Squire, 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 squire. Always good to have doubles, make stuff more consistent. We get that micro because you're special. Congrats. Okay. Um, I'm feeling some squire. Next, Ogre Warmore. <laughs> a fairy dragon. Or a frost elemental. So the Ogre Warmore, it's a warrior web, 50% chance to attack the wrong enemy. However, I've seen that go through like five cards and hit someone in the face for a win. So don't underestimate it if we really want some lols. Fairy Dragon, comes in early, trades things away. Frost Elemental, that battle cry freezing a character followed with a 5-5 attack. Well, if you throw that down turn 5, uh, so, sorry, turn 6 or above, then you're going to be pressuring away. That's really could give you a swing of play as well. War Mall. Capital War Mall has been voted. We see some frost. Frosty the snowman. People in the frosty spirit. I see element. I can see a majority there for the frost elemental. An Oasis Snapjaw. Oh, one of my favourite cards. Right. The Oasis Snapjaw. Brilliant if you can turn it into a taunt with a um, Sun Fury Protector or a Defender of Argus. Otherwise, it's a 2 7 that can trade stuff before it dies. The War Golem, 777, perfectly balanced for what it is. May trade stuff before it dies. And then a piloted Shredder. I love this card for tempo. The Shredders from Goblins vs. Gnomes are uniformly good because they give you another minion that generally can uh, sort of need late games is done, but that's a Shredder. It is hero, it is the nemesis of the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. So Shredders are good because they're two for one. They're Death Rattle two for one, they're not summoned two for one. So as soon as your opponent kills it, you then get something else as well. Um, but people like Ninja Turtles always, it's whether you go for the Ninja Turtle Ninja Turtle and Shredder looking at each other there can only be one it's like Highlander <laughs> Shredders, I, I think that's a Shredder unless other folk care to interject Shredder it is then ok, one more card to go oh ok Ooh, final a screw junk clunker a Master Sword and Smith, or a Wailing Soul. Right, Screwjank Clunker, a battle cry of giving a friendly mech 2 2. Yush, well, the health will keep it on the table for a bit. How many mechs do we actually have? One? Two? I think we got two. <laughs> so, two mechs. If we were trying to draft mech, then that would be splendid. Splendid indeed. As it is, situational trading. Uh, Master Swordsmith, if we put it up behind a tank, we could get some value. 
And then last but not least, Wailing Soul says that uh, Battlecry for silencing our other minions. Okay, well, how many things do we have on the table that actually have a sort of... Well, we have a lot of death rattles we wouldn't want to silence. So, the stat's not too bad on a Wailing Soul if you play it on its own, but if we silence things with death rattles, we're doing ourselves a disservice. So, let's see. I can see a couple of swordsmiths, three swordsmiths. Ooh, Scrooge. Yeah, okay, that's a swordsmith. Um, I would actually like to see a little mech deck, uh, mech warrior. As it is known. I think there's some uh, legs in it. I've seen people playing it. Okay, final deck review. Right, let's take a look. While we're early, we need to win in the early to mid game. We're not going to do loads in the late game. How do we play through our deck? Well, we've got Execute for some control, which is lovely. Um, trade, we throw down these early game minions. War Axe to control, Zao to uh, Chow to control. Zombie Chow, Zao, obviously. Battle Rage can be used for card at any point, ideally when we've got lots of damage minions. Use for weapons removal, trades, two creepers for trades, swordsmith behind tank for buffs. We can then use Crocolis Brewmaster for bouncing battle cries. Death Lord, only if we have to. Cobra for trades. Berserker tank. Commander, weaponsmith, two coal masters. All of those will let us do a nice early to early mid game transition. We should get the table under control and start chipping away at our opponent's health. When we hit four, that's where we get serious. We've got Dark Eindorf, Corsair, Corcoran Elite, a Shredder, two very solid tanks, and then weapons and bomb number to finish. So tactics control the table with minions and what we have, well, it's pretty much minions and that one weapon early doors. Cement control of the table with our big minions here, keep it under control, and then I think mid game to mid late game, start charging away and going for the win. Let's go! Yeah, I need to have a look at Mech Warrior. I'll be, be honest with you, I've not played it against anyone playing it. I'm, I'm up to rank 7, I've been floating around between rank 7 and rank 6, and Control Warrior I've been playing is slowing down. There's a lot of Rush Hunter, a lot of Rush Mech Mage, um, a lot of... Um, a reasonable amount of hand look still, and then the odd kooky thing, and then a few Mech Shamans. But Mech Warrior I've not seen so much of, but that doesn't mean that it's not awesome. Okay, so, what are we going for? We're playing a Mage. Um, I'm going to go for stuff I can play early. And I'm going to throw away the Death Lord because I know some people love it, but that thing just looks at me and makes me it makes me weep on many occasions. So I'm going to try get a couple of games in. I'll try get three in, but it depends on the length. We'll try and keep it to an hour. Um, righty then. Um, and for those of you tuned in, uh, if you're around this Sunday, we'll probably do a mega stream on Sunday. Um, more details on that later. So, Zombie Chow goes down. Now, I want to play this now, as we've discussed with Chows. It's no different to Constructed. No different whatsoever. This is worst when I am I have no minions to attack. So, if I start attacking into the face, really, um, I'm not sort of benefiting myself hugely. So, I could throw down a Swordsmith and start buffing my Chow immediately. Oh, down goes the bad bomber. There we go. Okay, so hey, we've still <laughs> we've managed to get away with that. And do you know what is really nice? I'm just going to jump here and coin in. Now I didn't have to coin in. I could have flooded the table with even more. But putting that up actually protects my swordsmith. I can then flood the table with more stuff next go. And now is my time. I think this is a good time to sacrifice the chair because I want to protect my swordsmith if possible. So if I leave the chair on for too long, he may heal my opponent at some rather awkward point. Flame cannon. Ooh, ooh, okay, well, do you know what? I don't mind that too much because it means I keep up my big tank. Otherwise, he could have been removing this. Flame cannon, of course, a new goblins versus gnomes card. Four damage to a random minion. Hey, if there's only one minion on the table, it's no longer very random. So do I weaponsmith or do I start flooding the table with my minions? Hmm. I don't really need a weaponsmith at this point, so I think that starting to pack things on the table is good. Ah, a little sip of tea there. A little bit of a cuppa. Lovely. Hey, and welcome to Umbra Domo. Welcome to Hayasri. Great to have you with us as well. 
Okay, so we are reasonable table control here. Now, when you get ahead, get more ahead. Two tanks, two taunts on the table in arena. Oh, so powerful. And I could trade this, but at the moment, I could just rush him down within four or five turns. Now remember, seven mana mages have access to flame strike. Flame strike will do four damage to all my minions, so that could spawn my party. So do I gamble that he doesn't have a flame strike? In which case, just rush him to the face, or next turn, if I want to be doubly safe, he's gone for his own cult master. Five last drops out to two. He'll then trade away the harvest golem. And he'll get a card draw from that with his own cult master. So a nice little sacrifice play there. No flame strike, please, says Dan. So four damage to a random minion. <laughs> okay, so um here, let's have a think. Right. It depends if we want to follow our bomb lobber dream or not. I don't think we are on this occasion, I do apologise, but a 2-2 weapon, I'm quite happy to use my hero's health as a resource here because I've got that tank. I could have sacrificed a minion, but I can afford to lose a little bit of health at this point. Welcome to Andy as well, good to have you with us too. So, there we go, I can sacrifice that, sadly I don't have a cult master, but this actually then gives me a full table of minions. Now, okay, if I do get flame struck then at least I still have my tank up and I'll have two little skittering spiders. Frost Nova, oof, nasty. We are all frozen in place. So that's going to slow me for a turn certainly. He's got a fireball there that he can certainly use to pick something off as well. Ah, and a Cult Master, that's a very nice drop there. 4 damage to a random enemy minion, so here's the thing, can't be targeted by heroes or spell powers, but... No, that's very nice. If there's only one minion, remember, the effect is no longer random, so... May as well armour up with our remaining armour, and swing on in. Has he got a flame strike? If not, that's a very quick win for uh, Team Felcroft stream, so... Good job, folks. Oh! Well, that is a shame, but it's not awful because we can cult master, we can weapon up, we can armor up. I could have thrown down my Emperor Cobra, but let's just keep the rush coming. Down to 5 health, we have lethal next turn. So, even though we got flame struck, we managed to get enough damage on the enemy hero that it didn't matter. If that flame strike had gone in while we still had a big full board, it would have been worse. So, that one not so random there. <laughs> There we go, Fireball comes in, looking as if mad a bomber. Oh, is that gonna. Is it? Is it? It is. Oh, oh, the pain. <laughs> Wrecking the joint. Look at that. Amazing. I love it. Okay, so. Right. Oh, come on. <laughs> Gone down to one. <laughs> so we should have this. We should have this. We should have this. We've got six there. But, you know what, double flame strike, more than possible. This is an arena after all. An arena's dreams are made and painful things happen too. Ooh, fire blast, and is that it? Oh, well played. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. Harry Kiri and the finest Japanese ninja samurai sense of it. There we go, 1-0. The dream begins. Okay, so I think we've got time for another couple of games. We'll get another couple in, and then we'll all be good. We will, of course, probably try and continue this arena run later in the week, given that we were meant to do this yesterday, and it's a Wednesday, for those of you live on Twitch. Um, can either do it tomorrow night, maybe Friday night as well. <laughs> Okie dokie, second game coming up, and of course we're on the Goblins vs Gnomes board, so I love a bit of that. I, I'm happy with the Shredder, I like having a Shredder around. Um, however, it's not till turn 4, we're playing a Pally. Ooh, I'm going to trade that back. 
I just want more early game drops. So the Haunted Creeper is good. Okay, oh wow, it's Creeper Town. Okay, so things on this board, if you've not seen this board, you can, I don't know how you get it to happen. I, I, I've not actually, but I think if you open this for long enough, then very importantly, you can trigger the little sparks on top of those. You can launch that off. I'm going to remove that just with my axe. We'll go for some axe control. This is a thing that you can launch, and of course you can trigger some space dishes and all that kind of jazz. Now, I don't know what the combo of levers is for this. Maybe someone scientific can let me know. Okay. Let's play with the board. More hearthstone. Down comes a creeper. So we can trade that. We can creeper with our creeper into a creeper. I'm going to drop a crocolisk. That will let me do some good trading. And I'm actually happily going to take that out as well. Ooh, okay. So that can trade. We can trade with our creepers. All is so far when and good. And I know what this gun does. I think it was thanks to Thrash or someone the other day. Just not a very good shot. In comes a coin. Demolisher. Prince of the Stream. Actually kind of annoying in Arena. There we go. Press D on my keyboard. D. Uh. Okay, so when I was distracted with bawdy things, right, he's still on full health. So this is a good time to deploy Zombie Chow. And I'd like to get rid of this. So I'm going to tee that up for being removed. Oh, two damage. I imagine that we'll see one of these spiders traded probably for that chow. Oh, cog hammer. A random minion gets divine shield and taunt. Look at that. Lucky odds. And heals himself for five. We'll then see that cog hammer. Two attack, three health. That's such a nice paladin weapon for controlling against rush with. Um, really nice. And then buffing something as well. That is a beauty of a weapon. Paladin mech. You heard it here first. Um, rather than use the Arcanite Reaper, I'm going to set up the trades on the table. Now this, there we go, Avenge. Ugh, when one of your minions dies, gives a random minion 3-2. Suddenly we have a 4 attack, 3 health. Demolisher. Incredibly painful. So I'd like to use my spider tank to trade that next go. I have a feeling that with that cog hammer, our minion will, uh, our opponent will swing in and control this. May not give me the choice. And now comes a shredder. Really, really nice in terms of grabbing control of the table. We are definitely on the back foot now in this game. Ooh, oh, there we go. He's going to let that demolisher die, but he'll still have a shredder on the table. Here is in the half shell. Turtle power. I'm going to go for my Lord of the Arena, get myself set up. That way when I remove this with my Arcanite Reaper next turn, if I choose to, then at least I have a minion with sufficient enough attack to swing in and clear up. I, uh, he's going to just sacrifice himself. In comes an Argent... Uh, you see, that's not so bad. I've seen some nasty legendary two costs being summoned. Mr. Nat Pagel and Blood Mage Thanos for two. Now goes an ogre, and that's actually not really very good news for us. Um, Corcoran Elite Charge. Uh, well, I could just charge in and start swinging. Maybe hope that he decides to try and trade away my Corcoran Elite. He can take that out with a token or similar, but this is going to be a race to the bottom now. So, it's a race to the bottom. I'm not going to be able to control that ogre, so I'm just going to try and see if I can wreck him. Now I've got 7 damage plus that 12 damage I can do next turn depending on what I draw in hand and whether it's a 3 cost. Oh, and down goes the shielded minibot. Great for making some trades. Jaraxos. I love Jaraxos. In comes the silence. Away goes the bubble. Maybe we'll see some trading. So, when we see that, I expect we will see my Corcoran Elite disappear. Where is my opponent? No, he's going for... F no, he's going for the trades. Okay. Whenever one of your other minions dies, draw a card. So, here's a decision. Do I Arcanite Reaper? That gives me the ability to remove much of this table, get it back under control. 
What do I cult master? I'm not going to be able to rush him down soon enough. It looks as though that control player is the sensible one. But it would be nice to remove that. Or do I go for the card draw? If I was on 9 mana, this would be simple. I just play both. I can afford to take 6. Against my. Ooh, I don't want. Okay, right. So if I lose, it's because I've gone for this maneuver to draw cards. Bang goes a frothing berserker, not so bad. Okay, that's fine. Because then what I can do is sacrifice, buff this up. That becomes a 4. Draw a card as well. Draw into another cult master. So I should have an opportunity to hopefully um, remove that boulder fist ogre. YOLO draw. Okay, we see a science. That's going to be my. Uh, and another piloted shredder, two shredders. This paladin's had an excellent draft. Really, really good. And away, of course, goes and away goes that. And he's just been able to make the trades and he's now got complete table ownership. Beautiful. Okay, down goes a belt most probably. I can or can I Reaper? I'm gonna force him to make some trades and say, look, if you want to kill two of my minions, that is fine, but you're gonna give me two cards for the privilege. Hopefully we can get some of these littlies. Fully expect that we'll see this piloted shredder. Playing your drawn card before drawing the other one, blasphemy. Yep, that was a silly play. Uh, there you go, Blood Mage Thanos. I told you he was going to rear his uh, ugly undead head at some point. Okay, All right, guys, I'll give you the executive decision. Yes or no on Death Lord. <laughs> Oh, and here comes the pain. But we have we have a nice play here, actually. Ugh. Right. Okay, I was going to say yes or no on Death Lord. It's now yes. Reason for that, we get Fru Tank. Fru Tank. Fru Tank. Now, removal. Oh, face. Gonna go go for removal because I don't really want this to be dying. If I just had enough for face, then this would have been done. But this is a nice tight game now. That weapon may well swing the balance along with the Captain Greenskin, giving him a 5-3 true silver champion. It's a very nice paladin deck that has been drafted here. Oh, the horror, the pain, the torment. <laughs> Arcanite Reaper will let us remove green skin. Oh, ooh. hang on, hang on a second. Now, I think this is pretty much doom regardless, given that he's got a five weapon. Can freeze, five, four. Yeah, I think we're pretty much done here. I could freeze this for the funds. I can do this. Yeah, we're gonna be doomed. Doomed. Bye. Ready. One one. Okay, so we now have two completed. Oh, another mage. Okay. Mage is loving a little bit of rush. Okay, so that's not an awful start. Do I really want to go hard mulligan on the Shieldmaster? Let's keep him and see what we get. If going second, I would have absolutely, without question, kept the Shieldmaster just because you can coin into him. Let's see what we can do. Swip on. Swordsmith. I'm feeling no to a swordsmith. I'm feeling yes to a crocodisk. That may bait him out. One thing, if you play Haunted Creeper, they're less likely to Frostbolt. Just because of the health pool for the three health. Some people might be tempted just to Frostbolt that way in the early game for some control. Oh, I hate this card. Uh, Uh, 
Okay. So the snow chugga 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 chugga. So annoying. Um, giving off random friendly minion one attack. I normally really really dislike um, these against warriors because of course they give you the weapon issue. They freeze you, and because they freeze you, you can't be swinging with your weapon. So as a warrior, that was a um, generally really nasty thing to do. These are evil. You'll see these in uh, mage, mech mage decks, obviously, uh, on ladder and similar. And if you're a weapon wielding class, then just being frozen is horrible. So snow chugger, great card. Plus at two two three, really solid stats too. And now it's a three four. <laughs> oh. He's going to use that to trade away my nasties, but I can trade away his snow chugger, 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 and for that I am happy. Now I think now I'm not really looking for a tank. I'm quite happy to have a shredder. He may well decide to trade that shadow sun cleric, but then that will leave me ahead, so I can then drop into my shield masters, cult masters, creepers, and similar. Okay, I get a pyromancer. Okie dokie, so, and down goes another bane of life, the water elemental. However, I can set myself up with a shield master, and actually I'm going to go, um, okay, I'm going to go to face. That's only because I can cult master next turn and then suicide that into that for a card draw if I want to. Okay, and down all that guys. So we've pretty much seen all of the trade in, came with a fire blast into an explosive sheep. Really, really nice that. Um, watch out for explosive sheeps, use them yourself. They are brill. So I'm going to be happy with a weaponsmith into a creeper here, and I'm going to take the freeze and damage to the face just to get this out of the way. I'd rather take a freeze on my own terms uh, than take any nasty pressure. At least I can get this freeze out of the way now. And it will remove, of course, an attack of mine next turn, and then I'll get it back the turn after that. Out comes the Sinjin. I can't quite trade that off the table. I can suicide my uh, Haunted Creeper into that for some card draw, which is lovely. And a Worgen is nasty in the hands of a mage. Because, of course, he can ping, or she can ping, her own minion. Now, do I Lord of the Arena, or do I start card drawing? Well, considering I'm frozen, I'm going to go for a Lord of the Arena. And then I'm actually just going to wait. I'm going to tap on the table and wait because I can then start. Um, oh, I could tip one away maybe. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to leave that just in case of a flame strike because then I can throw down my cult master next turn and suicide various things in to allow uh, for some card draw. So. Lots of pondering back and forth either way. I can always trade that as well, nice easily. That can be an easy trade across there too. That'll leave us with a ah, two health. No inventor comes down. Always nice for some card draw. And then that health's quite awkward as well. Four health, so you'll see those get some play in arena. They'll get tanked up as well. Sun Fury Protectors and Defender of Argus is alongside one of those. Three five. Not bad at all. Ugh. Oh. That's awkward because I was going to be using that to remove the uh, remove the raging organ, so we can still do that. I've got a bit of a different option now. Oh, shall we go for some? Shall we go for some madness? There we go. We'll draw two cards now. Oh, hang on. Let's do the play order of this right. I need to make sure I don't attack the enraged version of it. There we go. Yay! Two card draw with a double cult master. This is exactly what we were looking for. And that's fine. I know that this tank will die. 
However, I've then got a sludge belcher to replace it with. Oh, it's cult master versus cult master. It's like a Highlander of cult masters. However, I get double card draw. Oh, look at this. Look at my hand filling up with joy. Out comes a fairy dragon as well. Alrighty then, fire blast. That's going to remove one of my livelies. And that's annoying because I was going to use one of those to remove their cult master. So, oh, but in comes a fairy war axe. Right, we have options aplenty. Right, and I need to thin up my hand, otherwise we're going to be in some trouble. So, for maximum hand thin outage, I'd spider tank and frothing berserker. I don't actually. Oh, but then the belcher is just so, so strong. Too strong. The Death Lord will certainly be tough and awkward, but then I can let him pull something into play. Ooh, ugh, decisions, decisions. I'm going to. I'm going to do this against my better judgment. I'm going to remove the Death Lord. I'm going to suicide that in for another two cards. <laughs> I could have done that to start with. Oh, Argent Commander. I'm going to get that down as well. <laughs> oh, 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 quick. <laughs> Dread Corsair as well. <laughs> for one mana. Look at that turn. Double Dread, double, uh, double Argent, um, double Cult Master. Sorry, here first, folks. Polymorph comes in. Okay, that's a very solid play, removing the big threat. Down comes a water elemental, but we have execute in hand, so we can get that removed. Nice. I think even before anything else, I'm just going to play hyper safe, and we can remove that. And I actually just think there's nothing wrong here with going for a core chronolite, and perhaps to solidify things. Uh, Bomb Lob is not going to do damage because there's no minions. Um, so let's just protect everything. Down to four. To the face, loving it. So that is really nice. Uh, we'll have to quickly wrap up at the end of this. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Um, been great to have you. We're going to be live as always, um, as you can see on the left-hand side of our screen. We try and go live at those times every Monday through Friday. Special stream on Sunday. Watch out on Twitter for that at Felcraftcast. We'll always tweet before we go live. Um, so follow us on Twitter at Felcraftcast. You can see that there. If you're on Twitch, don't forget to check out youtube.com forward slash Felcraftcast. Got over 100 half and half hours, loads of arenas, deck guides, goblins versus gnomes, news, other stuff as well. And last but not least, if you're on YouTube, come check out Twitch. You can see it there on the left. We go live on that schedule. So thank you so much for tuning in. Been great to have you, old and new. Do let us know what you think, what you'd like to see, what we can improve. Thanks very much for tuning in and see you soon.